Hey there, hi there, ho there, and hello, my name is Michael. I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo, Michigan area, and welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. Today we're doing our last episode on uh, the Black History Month featuring of Black Mixologists, and there's no cold open here today, because y'all probably know what this one's about, Tamika Hall and her book, Black Mixolids. Firstly, I want to apologize to Tamika's co-author, Colin Asariapia, uh, Asair Apia is a super Americanized white butchering of your name, and I apologize. That was ignorant of me. I should have done better to check on that. That aside, though, it's time to begin into Tamika Hall, who she is, what Black Mixolence is about, why I took so much inspiration from it this Black History Month, and then make a quick little drink, something simple, to raise a toast to Miss Hall and the work she's done with this book. So Tamika is actually a first time author with Black Mixolids, which was published in, I think, November of 2022. This being the first time she's become an author, there's not really a lot to talk about in terms of her experience as a writer, like an author writer. However, she's done copyright for other companies, including uh, Coca-Cola, a couple different liquor companies, and I'm fairly certain Bacardi, which wouldn't surprise me if that was the case, because Colin Asariapia is one of the brand ambassadors for Bacardi, it makes sense that that's probably how they met. Throughout 2021 and 2022, Tamika and Colin, you know, turned it off writing the book, getting into a space where they were ready to publish it. It had a huge following online, actually, partly due to uh, COVID-19 being a thing. Everybody's kind of witnessing this thing happen live online and coming together for it. and it had a prominent, successful release. Now, while I can't talk much about Tamika's work, this being the only body of work that she has, I can talk about how important it was that she made it. A lot of history seems very ethnocentric, and that is to say, very white. Especially for people who look like me, it's important to recognize that that simply isn't a truthful telling of history. In a lot of different places, uh, people have simply omitted black people from history, regardless of whether or not their contributions were important. For example, the movie Hidden Figures was a huge deal when it came out because it acknowledged the existence of and efforts of black women at NASA who were assisting in developing the first successful space launches. Things like that happen but we don't talk about them openly. And if we don't talk about them, the history that black people make being omitted from the way we tell stories means that we eventually lose that history. As we talked about earlier this month, that same thing happened to John Dabney, who invented the Hailstorm Julep. It happens no matter what. And what Black Mixolence does is correct that grievous error. It goes into detail about people like John Dabney, funnily enough, but also the Black Mixologist Club and the origins of pouring one out for the homies or pouring one out for someone who's lost. Um, the countless creations of modern black mixologists who don't get talked about a lot. Collectively, the book is an important cultural reset that gives proper credence and acknowledgement to black mixologists who otherwise would not have a dedicated space in which they are being talked about, appreciated, respected, and supported. Tamika's efforts in writing this book are so altruistic that it blows my mind, and I have nothing but unending respect for her and Colin for writing this book and being so willing to share that part of their culture with the world, and I'm grateful I got to experience it. Now, the thing is, Colin, uh, Colin is a mixologist, but we've already talked about his work previously, so doing another cocktail for him doesn't seem fair, uh, but Tamika's also not a bartender. So how do I go about making a drink for Tamika? Well, in the beginning of the book, Tamika tells a story about her first communion. Uh, and it's a really funny story. Um, I can imagine you probably know how it goes. I feel like most people have a very, maybe, maybe have a similar first communion experience. I won't spoil it, so you have to buy the book, but essentially it involves red wine. And I thought, Considering Tamika has focused so much on the work of black creators and supporting them and giving them a voice, I should do the same thing in a variation of a New York, a New York sour that I call a Tamika sour, which we are going to make right now. So a Tamika sour is a variation on a New York sour that forgoes the layering of the wine 
and does a couple different things to embrace the flavors that exist in it more cohesively. For anyone who doesn't know, a New York sour is a variation on a whiskey sour that is the first time that egg white is introduced to a whiskey sour, as far as I'm aware, and also introduces a float of a drier, fruity red wine across the top, which diversifies the palate and sort of takes it in a different direction. They're a delicious cocktail. They work really, really well. However, I recently noticed that there are some mixologists out there making variations on it where they don't bother layering the red wine. And I kind of think that's a better idea. You see, Tamika wrote a book that is chiefly about black people expressing excellence in their craft, that craft being mixology. And it's only fair that if we're going to make a cocktail to raise a toast to Tamika, as well as everybody in that book, that we use black-owned products. And it's exactly what we're gonna do here and why a Tamika sour will require specific ingredients. Elijah Craig, as I discovered, is a black-owned bourbon company. And that's a pretty common one you've probably heard of before. And this is pretty easy stuff to get also. Small batch, shit is delicious. But that will be our whiskey base. And then for our red wine, we're gonna go on with uh, Love Cork and Screw Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, it's called We're Moving Up. This is a lesser known company, one that I actually didn't learn about until I was doing some research on black owned brands. And it's a delicious Cabernet. This is like an upstart black wine company. Uh, they make delicious stuff. Um, and you should definitely give this a try. Um, as you can tell, I've already opened it so I can give this a shot. Um, it's a very sweet Cabernet. It's less into those kind of like strong roasty notes or like barrel rested notes you might get on a Cabernet but it's still fruity like one without being sweet like a sangria. It's good stuff. And you should definitely give it a shot even if you just want some decent wine to have along with like a pasta dinner. I think it'd be perfect there. So we've got our black owned ingredients. We've got everything we need to make. A Tamika sour, let's get started. To start off, we're going to need some simple syrup, specifically three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Next up, we're gonna need a full ounce of lemon juice. Dump that right in there. Next up, we're going to do an ounce of our Love Cork Screw Cabernet Sauvignon. Boom. And then we need two ounces of Elijah Craig Small Batch. So in a traditional whiskey sour, um, there is Angostura used as like a sort of dots along the top as part of the garnish. Instead, we're just gonna throw two dashes directly into the drink. Um, I want to sort of imbue the whole thing with the aroma and spices that Angostura carries, and I think that's going to complement very, very well the prominent fruit notes in the wine and the oak character of the Elijah Craig. Finally, the part that's probably going to give some of you pause, uh, we need a whole egg white. So egg whites and cocktails are not a new thing. They're not an unsafe thing to do. No less safe than eating a like over easy, over medium egg. Um, Frankly, with modern refrigeration and pasteurization processes, you have next to nothing to worry about when it comes to using egg in cocktails. If it really bothers you, just use aquafaba or any number of vegan, like, bottled alternatives for frothing agents. Nothing will work as well as an egg white, but, you know, do you, man. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a dry shake on this to emulsify that uh, egg white with our citrus juice. I'm throwing my cocktail spring in there to agitate it further. Do this for about 12 to 15 seconds. Be sure to get a good strong hold on the shaker or else it might explode on you, which you definitely don't want. Once we've got that preliminary shake done, I'm gonna take that string, string, spring out, and we're gonna introduce some ice to chill and dilute. Goes without saying, we're gonna do one uh, whole cube, one cube cracked. Gonna reseal that, tap it down, and shake again to chill and dilute. Now to serve the drink, we're gonna go ahead and take a double rocks glass, and I'm gonna crack a particularly large cube into pieces just directly to it. Typically speaking, a New York sour is served up or in a chilled glass with no ice. I think that's dumb. Ice is fine. Once so we've got our ice all set, we're gonna go ahead and Double strain this in, like so. Once that egg white foam we've created by shaking it has started to set a little bit, I'm gonna take some Peychaud's bitters just to diversify the spice notes and just do three or four drops in a line along the top. I'm gonna drag a toothpick through that. 
for the sake of design. And there you have it, a Tamika Sour. Okay, now that we've cleaned our station up, we can give this a shot. As you can see, that egg white has formed like a nice thick foam towards the top and give them the drink a nice creamy sort of orange color. Let's give it a sip. Yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> it's everything about a New York sour combined into a single sip. There's no separation of the wine from the rest of the drink. So you're getting the character it provides uh, like on the sip in every sip rather than it sort of being on the top, getting soaked down first and then followed by whiskey sour. It's in this case, it's, it's more focused on adding the flavor of the wine to the evolution of the sour itself, which with the help of the Angostura bitters is really just kind of bold and strong and in the best way, old fashioned in like a new modern sense. That egg white has given the whole thing this kind of mellowed out, creamy, silky mouthfeel. And the combination of how that affects both the whiskey and the wine has made them sort of come together as like an even broader version of the same like set of flavors. It's really impressive. And it's a very simple, basic drink that I think anybody can get behind so long as they're not, you know, stupid about the egg white thing. <laughs> so yeah, to go over some uh, some, some more stuff about Tamika, um, I was trying to research more about the book and I, I came across this really odd thing. I think there's two versions of the book in print and I cannot for the life of me find the second one. But this one here, uh, as you might be able to see, it has 70 recipes in it. It's roughly 140 some pages uh, and that's, a really good length. That's a lot of content. I still look through it frequently trying to find the next thing I want to try. And when I was researching the actual book itself and like its publishing process, even on currently on the publisher Kingston Imperial's website, there's a version that has 84 recipes. And that version is substantially longer. It's like 209 pages long. I wrote an email to Kingston Imperial. Uh, they didn't, they didn't respond. I looked around and for the life of me, I could not find this version of the book. Every bookstore that I looked at had the 70 recipe version, uh, uh, even though an interview with Tamika um, had a picture, like a screen cap of the front of the book, it said 84 and the publisher website says 84. I don't know, I feel like I'm missing content and I really, really want it in my life. <laughs> So if somebody could find where I can get a copy of that version of the book, please send me a link and I will buy it because I want to know what else is in it. <laughs> anyway, that has been uh, this episode of Mike's Heart Reviews. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, this has been a nice, really you know, interesting trip into uh, another culture's work in mixology and honoring and respecting that and showcasing that here on the show. Um, and I can't wait to do more of it in the very near future. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and I will see you all around. Drink responsibly, and have a great day.